Hey folks, Todd Martin here, your local Louisville real estate broker with Amp Realty. And uh, coming to you live on Tuesdays, Tuesday Talks with Todd at 12. Uh, glad you stopped on by. And uh, hopefully uh, you are not being affected by the government shutdown. If you are, uh, my, my feelings go out to you because it's kind of a crazy time for everybody. But we're going to continue a little bit with that today, and we're going to talk about some other things with regards to the, the housing market and, and a few things that we're seeing as well as um, some types of property. So again, Todd Martin, Amp Realty, we're here to answer all your questions. Uh, feel free to reach out to us anytime, 502-220-4663. And with that, I'm being assisted by Gabby today. So Gabby, take it away. What can I do for you? Yeah, um, so my first question is, do you have any more insight on the government shutdown? Oh boy, do I have insight, right? Um, no, it, you know, I, I wish I did. Uh, again, we're still seeing a lot of delays uh, across the country and things. Um, again, remember we talked about the pulling of the tax records, uh, that 4506T that comes directly from uh, the IRS. But the good news that I did read is that um, it says that your tax refunds won't be delayed. So with regards to, you know, again, trying to find a house and you want some money for uh, for down payment, uh, good thing is, you know, we can still hopefully bank on that tax return being sent to you back at a reasonable time. So that's a good thing. Um, again, mainly the loans that are being affected are the USDA mortgage loans. Those USD mortgage loans, usually fall outside of the city. Uh, they are more of a uh, rural, rural housing outside of Maine metropolitan areas. So in Louisville, we're gonna be outside the Jefferson County border. Um, we are seeing delays on those because those are 100% government entities. And again, we haven't seen too much uh, with FHA or VA. We're still being able to, um, to get those uh, funded through the different lenders. So, so things are still moving forward. Uh, we're just seeing a little bit of inconvenience right now, uh, but where the main concern comes across the country is again, the national parks um, are getting trashed, literally, which is a shame. And um, the other concern is uh, security at airports. We just read the other day that uh, the Miami airport actually had to shut down because they didn't have enough. Well, I think one of the wings of the airport had to shut down because they didn't have enough uh, TSA workers uh, so again, you know, we're hoping that this government shutdown does not take um, too much longer so people can get back to work, lives can get started again, and uh, we can get back into the full swing of things. But as of right now, uh, we're still kind of status quo. We're just a little bit more on the time frame. So yeah, that's Gabby. That's kind of what we're seeing across, uh, you know, as far as the nation and as far as realtors go. Uh, again, just a little bit of a time frame uh, issue but no major inconveniences at this point. Awesome. Uh, um, my question leads into a different topic. Okay. Um, so with that, um, I just had a few um, terms that I wanted to ask about. So what is a short sale and a foreclosure and what do they mean? Okay, okay. Well, and I think a lot of people when they're shopping for houses, uh, they see those terms used synonymously. Uh, and the the thing that, that, that happens is back in 2008, 2007, 2008, we had a lot of short sales coming to the market. Now, um, and, and hopefully, again, if we look at kind of the government shutdown, we won't hear that term after this gets started because what happens on foreclosure is a foreclosure is basically somebody that has missed a payment on their house, They've not been able to catch up. And now the bank wants to come and foreclose on that property. In other words, they want to take that property back. So um, kind of going back to the government shutdown, if somebody's not able to pay their mortgage, um, remember, we've got a couple of resources here in Kentucky to help you out. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep bouncing back to that. But we've got a couple of resources to help you out um, through the Kentucky Housing Association uh, if you do need some assistance. And the other thing I would advise too is if for some reason you're not getting a paycheck, talk to your bank. I think most banks are under the impression that they're going to need to help some of their buyers out. So we don't run into the foreclosure crisis that we did before. But let's get back into kind of the question, the foreclosure and the short sale. Um, a foreclosure is actually the process 
that starts the bank repossession on the house. Okay. So in other words, you might hear some terms um, like um, failure to pay, bank repossession, bank repo. Those are all kind of the same as a foreclosure. Foreclosure really doesn't take into effect until after um, about 60 days of non-payment. Okay. Then what happens is the bank will start sending you notification. Uh, once the bank starts sending you notification, then they will lay out a process in which they are going to start the foreclosure process. Now, one of the things and the first thing that they'll do is they'll file what's called a les pendants. That les pendants is a legal document which they file at the courthouse, which just says, hey, this is public record. And for everybody to know at 123 Any Street, we, the bank, are now going to work on the process of getting our property back because we loaned you money. So we're going to go through that process of the foreclosure or closing on the property to take it back. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes there are people out there that, that want to jump on, on those foreclosures. Um, and if you're somebody that's interested in a foreclosure property, or uh, if you want to see if properties have been um, or are going to be foreclosed on, uh, there's a lot of sites out there that will ask you to pay some money to see that. Um, you don't need to do that. You just need to contact your realtor that you have a working relationship with. And we can tell you, you know, which houses have had the foreclosure process started. It doesn't mean that they're always for sale because again, the seller has the opportunity to bring that debt back up to where it needs to be in order to move forward. So foreclosure, just because something is under foreclosure, doesn't mean it's going to go through the process. Okay. That just means that they've started the process and there are many steps along the way. Now, a short sale, uh, short sale is a little bit different than a foreclosure. So what a short sale is, is a short sale is actually where somebody owns mo owes money on the house and they want to sell the house, but the house is no longer worth the value. So again, one of the things that we were seeing, uh, for example, when the price uh, was spiking up, uh, we were seeing properties going several thousand dollars above the asking price. And now somebody wants to sell it and the neighborhood's not holding that value. Um, a short sale doesn't have to be somebody that's in financial distress. Okay. Um, I would say 95% of the time, uh, somebody that is short selling a property is in financial distress, but it doesn't always have to be that way. So let's take, for example, just an easy number. I like easy numbers. Uh, let's say you have a house and you have a mortgage on it and you have a mortgage of a hundred thousand dollars. Let's say the neighborhood, uh, only holds a value of $75,000. Okay and you cannot get $100,000 for that house. Well, what that means is that means you're going to be short $25,000 when you sell the property. What you're asking is you're asking the bank to take a loss on that property of $25,000. Now, here's the crazy thing about that. Some banks will say, okay, that's fine. We just want to get our money back so we can put it somewhere else and get the interest and the principal payments um, from another person who wants to invest with us. Um, other banks will say, absolutely no way. We're going to start the foreclosure process if you don't pay your money. Now, here's the thing. People hear short sale and they think deal. But the problem is there's nothing short in a short sale because there are many steps that are involved in short sale. Now, what a short sale, again, basically means is that you are shorting the house on what you owe. You have a difference on what you can sell it for and what you can actually um, owe on the property. Now, here's the other thing. When you go to negotiate a short sale, you're just not negotiating with the bank that holds the mortgage because we don't know what somebody else has on the back end of that mortgage. Maybe somebody took out an equity line. Maybe there's an additional ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 and you've got to negotiate through that. So when you start a short sale, there's basically three phases of negotiation. The first phase of negotiation is just going to be the contract, whether or not the buyer is willing to accept that contract. If the buyer accepts that contract, that's fantastic. When you're going to go, you're off to the next step. The next step of the short sale, you're going to find yourself negotiating directly with the bank. This is somebody that has to look at the numbers. This is somebody that has to say, does this or doesn't this make sense? Okay. And if the property, okay, again, now, depending on where you are, in the situation, the property could be going under the foreclosure foreclosure procedures, procedures, whew, little tongue tied there, foreclosure procedures. And what could be happening is again, they're short selling to get out of the foreclosure process. 
Okay. So as you're going on um, the short sale, you're also going on the foreclosure process. So you've got a lot of things happening um, simultaneously with the properties. Now, the uh, as you get through the second phase of negotiation, which is the the, the initial negotiator, then you have a third phase of negotiation. And that's basically the person at the bank that has talked to the second negotiator, okay, that has also looked and run a title search to make sure that there's nothing else attached to that property. And if there is, they are trying to negotiate it. They're trying to short that second loan that's on the prop. So if you've got a, you know, the, the, the first bank is not going to take a huge loss and the second bank is not going to take a huge loss. I and mean, they're not going to, you know, wipe it away. Some people that are in a second position know that they may or may not be able to get the money back. So there's a possibility that they're going to take less. But some secondary holders, depending on where they got the loan through, will say, go ahead and start the foreclosure process. We don't care. We're not going to do anything. So you've spent all this time, money, energy, and effort, and you've gotten all the way down to the third negotiation, and you've lost the sale. Or the other thing that I've seen happen is the foreclosure proceedings are starting. The bank is taking their sweet time as far as getting out and doing all the negotiating on that. And before you know it, the house has gone to the courthouse and it's been sold on the courthouse steps. So you are out of all the money, time, energy, and effort on short sale. So again, there's a lot of unknowns on a short sale, but once you get to that third and final negotiator, then that's when you've got to negotiate that time frame. That's when you got to negotiate the closings. So again, a lot of times we talk about foreclosures and short sale properties are more of a distressed situation than anything else. Um, people usually aren't on uh, what's the word? They, they, they aren't on time with their mortgage payments when it comes to a short sale. There's a problem or a situation, and that's why the foreclosure is there. So again, foreclosures and short sales kind of run synonymously with each other um, as they as they kind of work together. You work back and forth. They mean to two totally different things, but people kind of use those foreclosure and short sale kind of together. Does that make sense, Gabby? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, my next question is how long does a foreclosure sale, um, take or how long does the short sale take? Well, again, those short sales, yeah, it just really depends on, you know, how fast things are going in some short sales. Uh, we see that, um, they have a pre-qualified short sale. In other words, the bank has agreed already. They've done a title search. They know that there's nothing else secondary on the market. And the bank has a specific number. So again, let's go back to that hundred thousand dollar house. That hundred thousand dollar house, the bank might be willing to take a ninety five thousand dollar or a ninety thousand dollar cost on it, um, or the bank might be willing to take eighty thousand dollars. We don't know yet. But if it's pre qualified as a short sale and the bank has agreed to a particular payoff, you might see that that short sale is being sold, and it says the bank will accept this. This is a pre approved amount. So it could be just the standard, like a regular closing, or again, if you're not willing to pay that, again, we go through the negotiations again. So um, the the long an the short answer is there's not very there's not much of a specific time frame on it, but the kind of the long answer and the drawn out answer is it can go anywhere from 30 to 60 to potentially 90 days, um, and you've got to be in it for the long haul when you work a short sale or a foreclosure. So my last question is, as a first time home buyer trying to save money, mm -hmm. should I consider one of these options? Well, you know, that's uh, that's a potential. Let's talk about a third option um, that kind of run along with the, uh, the foreclosure and the short sale. Let's talk a little bit about bank owned properties. OK, now we talked about banks wanting to take those properties back and we see some properties that are bank owned properties um, and a bank owned property. Is basically a property that has already gone through the foreclosure process. Nobody has bought that property and the bank has bought that property back. Okay. So the bank owns the property. As a matter of fact, that's a great way to actually save some money is to find a good bank owned property um, because you're negotiating directly with the bank. The bank already has the clean title on it and you don't have to worry about the issues in cleaning up title with the, the short sale or foreclosure type situation. And the bank already knows what they want out of it. And the bank's held it long enough that they're trying to get their money back out. Now, here's the thing. 
with a short sale, with a foreclosure, with a bank owned property, more than likely you're going to be buying those properties in as is condition. Now let's talk a little bit about your question. Your question is, you know, as a first time home buyer, should you even consider one of those? Now it depends. And in real estate, a lot of it, you know, it depends all the time on different factors. So for me, if I was a first time home buyer and I'm not a carpenter, I'm not an electrician, I'm not a plumber. Okay. I can do a few of those basic things. But to me, if I got into a property that was in as is condition, uh, I'd be a little bit concerned, especially since in the foreclosure, in the short sale, in the bank owned property, most of the time the property is vacant and the properties have been winterized, the electric's been turned off. So you really don't know what you're getting. Okay. Now, if you are someone with a contracting background, uh, if you know what you're doing with regards to, you know, um, swinging a nail and a hammer, that's great. Uh, but understand this, um, you know, there was one of my favorite movies out is Shrek and Shrek and Donkey are walking along and Donkey asks Shrek, he says, Shrek, you know, what are ogres like? And he's like, ogres are like onions. And he goes, what? He's like, ogres are like onions. They have layers. And that's what you get when you get into a bank owned, a foreclosure, or a, um, a short sale property, right? You're getting the layers that go with it because we don't know what type of deferred maintenance. Uh, we don't know if we've got critters in the wall, if we've got, um, we don't know if we've got termites. So again, you can still do a lot of the inspections on that, but you can also save a bundle of money. In some cases I've seen where bank owned properties are very, very nice properties. Um, it's just been a bad situation and people are walking into equity right away. So again, it depends. It depends on the property. It depends on the location. It depends on the situation of the individual that you have to take into account. For most first time home buyers, um, I would say a majority of them out there, I would not even consider one of these properties um, to be a main source simply because of the time, energy and effort that it takes to make sure that you um, and or your family are, are safe and understand that this is going to take a lot of work because when you get in it, and you start getting into those layers, you're going to need more money. And it's not a situation where the bank's going to necessarily loan you the money to fix up your house. So again, you have to be, um, have some cash available in order to do this. So as a first time home buyer, rule of thumb is move into something where you can do small improvements. Okay. Over a period of time. And as you get more and more advanced, if you want, or you have additional cash, um, then one of these three options, short sale, foreclosure, bank owned, would probably be a good option for you to save some money. But again, you have to have a little bit of experience and you have to kind of know what's going, you know, what's going through the whole process. And again, you know, talk to your realtor, talk to your loan officer, um, ask them these questions. Um, we've been in the market, we've been in the field, and we've seen a lot of different scenarios and we could probably run a couple of things and kind of give you an idea of what certain items would cost and how you'd have to deal with it and realistically what you could expect once you got into these particular type of properties so does that make sense you know um as far as first time home buyers go gabby you know just kind of uh, err on the side of caution yeah yeah for sure um okay. it makes total sense <laughs> and that was that was my last question okay um, i thank you so much for your time today um, yeah yeah answer, answer hey, your question. yeah no you know we try and uh, again you know, we'd like a little bit more participation on this. So if anybody, you know, if you all have any questions, you know, feel free to uh, shoot me an email. Uh, the, my email will be below. It's Todd at ToddMGroup.com. Heck, you can even text me the question, 502-220-4663. Uh, we'll answer the questions. Any kind of, um, any, any questions you've got with regards to real estate, we'll do what we can. But we're always here to answer your questions and help out. Feel free to use it as a resource anytime. And I uh, hope everybody has a great rest of the week and uh, that things go smoothly for you. Thanks for stopping by.